I'm not afraid to admit, I'm a fan of white wines. At the end of a long day, light-bodied white wines never fail to brighten me up. If you've had New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc or Italian Pinot Grigio, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But those are just the tip of the iceberg. Let's dive into some light-bodied white wines that you deserve to know about. So I buy a lot of my wines online. I do this because not only does it increase my selection and expose me to wines that aren't mass produced, it also gives me a chance to do my research. You'd be surprised how many enthusiasts and professionals actually buy wines untasted and untested. We simply use our knowledge of wines, regions, and winemaking to get really close to what we want, and then the rest is just an adventure. Our first wine comes from a region right off the Mediterranean in southern France. The area is called languedoc Roussillon, and the region is right here. This area specializes in just one grape, and it's called Picpoul, although no one can agree on how it's spelled. What we can agree on is Picpoul means stings the lip, and it's probably referencing this wine's mouth-puckering acidity, with flavors of preserved lemon, honeydew melon, crushed rocks, and sea air, you won't even need a mignonette for your oysters. Just grab a bottle of one of these. So let's geek out about acidity for a minute. One measure of acidity in wine is the pH level. Wines on average range between 4 and 3 pH. 7 is neutral, so the lower the number, the more sour and tart a wine tastes. Generally speaking, red wines are less acidic than white wines. And you can actually taste pH on your tongue as the excess hydrogen ions make your taste buds tingle. This wine comes from the northern reaches of Portugal in an area called the Minho where they specialize in a regional wine called Vino Verde. It's located just north of Porto, where you'll find a lot of famous port houses, and just south of the Spanish border. Here you'll find tons of indigenous grape varieties and wines are often blends. What makes me excited about this wine is it features two of the region's important white grape varieties, and they are Alvarinho and Lorero. Vino Verde is typically bottled with some spritz, so they'll be a bit fizzy and offer up flavors of lemonade, white melon, grapefruit, and they often have this floral tone that reminds me of orange blossom. What do you pair with Vino Verde? A pool party, obviously. My next two wines come from Austria. In Austria, Vienna is right here, and if you go to the northwest of Vienna, you get into Lower Austria, aka Niederösterreich, and these wines come from a region called Kamptal, which is right here. In Kamptal and the rest of Austria, the most important grape is called Gruner Feppliner. This wine has a wide range of styles, ranging from peppery lean whites to rich oaked styles, although those are a little bit more rare. I'm expecting these wines to have flavors of starfruit, gooseberry, grass, white pepper, and maybe even a whiff of wet crushed gravel. Yum. So here's something I do when I'm picking out wines. I'm a huge fan of information. I'll look up the producer, whether they own their own vineyards, and any technical information I can find on the wine. What I found is this is actually a pretty good way to suss out quality. For example, this producer, Alram, was all about their wine. It was on their website, they gave you lots and lots of technical details, and they even told me where the vineyards were. This wine, on the other hand, Franz Etz, wasn't even on their website, gave very little technical information, and I suspect it might only be made for the US market and not even available in Austria. Not that cheap wines are a bad thing, I mean, I did buy this, and I am gonna drink it, but I'm probably not gonna put it in my collection. My last wine comes from a declassified French region in the southern part of France called Côte de Gascon. It's actually located in southwest France, just to the southeast of the famous wine region of Bordeaux. And where this wine is made is actually a famous brandy production region called Armagnac. In fact, they use the exact same grapes in this wine as they do in Armagnac, and it turns out it makes a really good dry white wine. The grapes are Uni Blanc and Columbard, and I'm expecting this wine to have like super huge green melon flavors and citrus fruit notes, and essentially replace your need for fruit salad at a picnic. If you're wondering if there are more lip-zapping, light-bodied white wines out there, 
I would say yes. There are many, many, many more. In fact, if you want to get started hunting right now, you can go to winefolly.com to our grape section where we talk about these grape varieties and many more in this style. I gotta say, if you've been crushing on a light-bodied white wine lately, please leave us a comment below, especially if you work in retail or a sommelier. We all need to know what you're drinking. Finally, if you want to learn more about wine, definitely pick up a copy of Wine Folly Magnum Edition, The Master Guide. It's a James Beard Award winner and it's lots of fun to learn. All right, that's it for me this week. And until next time, I love you guys. Peace out.